at sunup on April 6th. Hundreds of curious citizens of Pasco, Washington, swarmed to a makeshift airport just outside of town to witness what was to be the birth of commercial aviation in the United States. Leon D. Cuddyback, a 27-year-old pilot for fledgling Barney Airlines, coaxed the bulky engine of his swallowed biplane into life and took off with 207 pounds of mail. The underpowered swallow struggled to gain the altitude it needed to clear the blue mountains that lay in the path of Boise, Idaho. Barney Airlines had begun operations. At sunup on April 6, 1976, 50 years later, Hundreds are at Pasco's modern airport to see a reenactment of Cuddyback's flight by E.E. E. Hilbert, a United Airlines DC-8 captain. Hilbert will fly an original Swallow, authentically restored. During the brief half-century between the two flights, Varney and three other small airlines evolved into what is now the free world's largest airline, United. Cuddyback, 77 years old, and standing straight as a ramrod is on hand as United President Richard J. Ferris sets the stage for the reenactment flight. Good morning. If it is this morning, that's what they tell me. <laughs> that buzzer went off at 4.30 this morning. You know, it's very interesting. Uh, I, I got up this morning and I turned the television on and I thought maybe there'd be something on and it came to that station where the, the news goes across in little lines, right, and you read it, and all of a sudden the camera pans across all this information. And I thought it'd be pretty important, Buck, if I got this information, because uh, I want you to know that the temperature is 54 degrees, that the barometric pressure is 29.87, that the wind is 5 to 7 miles an hour, gusting up to the west, southwest west, and that the relative humidity is 56.5. Now, Leon, I'm sure when you got here, somebody said, the weather's from that way, and Boise's that way. <laughs> but it's, it's great to see so many of you out here at this hour of the morning. Truthfully, I thought we'd talking, be talking to about 10 people. It's just wonderful <laughs> that the folks of Pasco could turn out like this for this occasion. Ready for his now, flight. Gilbert praises the man he will emulate. 51 years old, and I'm still a kid. <laughs> Last night I wanted to drink and cut it back to his own. Oh, no, you're under the 24 hour rule. You've got a point. <laughs> he left off one airplane. I'm now a swallow captain, too. <laughs> He gave me a certificate last night saying that I can officially fly the trip now. Check pilot, check me off. <laughs> but it's kind of like playing me in my shadow. This man did it. He started it all. He's given me a wonderful opportunity to work for a great company. United Airlines is home to me. And it's been a wonderful association over the years. And I'm going out there and fly that thing today and have some fun doing it. <laughs> Virtually every detail of the original flight is duplicated in the reenactment. A postal official hands over more than 9,000 pieces of mail. The same route will be followed over the Blue Mountains to Boise. Even the weather looks the same, threatening. A bulky engine 50 years ago delayed departure for more than 20 minutes. This time, the engine cooperates. Exactly 6.23 in the morning, the Swallow is airborne, on her way to...
furniture store, help the little place, and a half dozen other aircraft that are tagging along. Most turn back or land at airports along the way. But Hilbert and his swallow fly off over the snow-covered peaks and keep their date with history. An anxious crowd waits in the pelting rain in Boise. After two and a half hours in the air, drenched to the skin, Hilbert lands and taxis up to the waiting crowd. Among the first to greet him is Cuddyback, who remembers a similar greeting by adoring crowds in the same city a half a hundred years ago. Hilbert obviously enjoyed the place, but is glad it had ended. The downpour continues, but the crowd stays to see still another tribute to the man whose courageous flight of 50 years ago launched permanent scheduled U.S. air service. With Edward E. Carlson, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of United Presiding. A Boeing 727 is christened. Leon D. Cuddyback. The industry that began an uncertain existence in 1926 has advanced far beyond the borders foreseen by its founder. It has sent marvelous works of technology into the sky, one after another, spanning this nation and the world bringing people together in friendship and peaceful promise, inspiring all who have faith in the human spirit and who aspire to the stars.